And most people never do any thinking about their thinking unless they have a crisis in their life. You know, yeah. all of a sudden they say, gee, why did that happen? Well, uh, the, the answer to that question, you're in the realm of thinking about your thinking. But most people don't like crisis situations, so they associate that type of thinking with crises. Welcome to the Wealth Strategy Secrets of the Ultra Wealthy Podcast, where we help entrepreneurs like you exponentially build wealth through passive income to live a life of freedom and prosperity. Are you tired of paying too much in taxes, gambling your future on the stock market, and want to learn about hidden strategies for making your money work for you? And now your host, Dave Wolcott, serial entrepreneur and author of the best-selling book, the Holistic Wealth Strategy. Hey everyone, and welcome to today's show on Wealth Strategy Secrets. Today we are joined by a special guest, Dan Sullivan, the ultimate entrepreneur himself, who has coached over 7,000 entrepreneurs in his career and has over 40 years of experience as a speaker, consultant, and entrepreneurial coach. He's focused on helping entrepreneurs succeed in both professional and personal spheres. And Dan has authored more than 30 books on entrepreneurship and personal growth. He runs The Strategic Coach with his wife and business partner, Bab Smith, and operates in offices in Toronto, Chicago, and the UK with the headquarters in Toronto. Hope you enjoy the show. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, Dan, I've got to say, I'm just so grateful to have you on the show to be able to share some of your thoughts and wisdom with our audience, because it was literally a podcast just like this that I listened to seven years ago, where I heard you for the first time. And since then, I've been a member of Strategic Coach, and I've 10X'd several times since then, and so many different assets of my life, uh, in my freedom of purpose, uh, my freedom of relationships, my freedom of money, and just such an exponential multiplier. So I know the audience is really going to enjoy this. Again, thank you uh, for your time today. And for those that aren't really familiar with some of your background, tell us how your journey really started for you. Yeah, well, this is, I'm kind of one of the pioneers in coaching for entrepreneurs. They're, they're there was a breed of coach uh, when I started in 1974, but it was mostly corporate. And it was, you know, Dave, back in the 70s, you had to explain what coaching was. It wasn't uh, because coaching was, uh, you know, associated with sports, the, some art forms. You had coach, you had dance coaches, you had singing coaches and everything else. But the whole notion that um, entrepreneurs would have coaches was, I think, uh, probably a pretty new thought. And so I started, uh, I was a writer in an ad agency in Toronto, a big agency. It was number two in Canada. And they had big accounts, Kraft, Chrysler, TD Bank, which is big in the States. And I was a writer. And I was a good enough writer to make a living, but it, was, uh, it wasn't a passion. And I had mostly small accounts because they weren't paying me very much. So they put me on the accounts where they weren't making very much money. <laughs> and uh, and uh, what I enjoyed about the relationship with the clients who were mostly uh, family businesses uh, was not so much the advertising aspect of it, but just asking them questions of where they thought their company was going. And what I observed is my questions were appreciated by the the clients of the agency, customers of the agency. And uh, I just, just really like asking questions. So that's 74, launched out, had a really difficult first 10 years, couple of bankruptcies, mostly due to receivables, went through a divorce. Uh, and then around 84 or so, uh, I really settled in. But the big breakthrough was meeting Bab Smith, who is my partner, and we had two abilities that just totally complemented each other. And Babs is marvelous at creating teams, teams of skilled people, creating processes. And I'm really good at just being front stage. And uh, so we took off from there. So it was 
one-on-one coaching for 15 years. And then in 89, uh, we're in our 35th year, uh, 89, we put it into a workshop workshop setting where you'd have, we started off with six and I thought I had died and gone to heaven. <laughs> you weren't charging them full rates, but you were charging them 80 cents, uh, 80, 80, 80 percent. So uh, you were getting a hundred from a client, but you were getting six times 80 from six of them. And now, you know, now, um, long story short, 35 years later, we have 18 coaches in coach and we have 3000, we're pushing 3000 entrepreneurs. We, you know, we do 600 workshop days a year in the schedule. And, uh, so it's, uh, it's, gotten out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and and how many entrepreneurs have you coached at this point in your career, Dan? Would you Yeah, say? I was asked that yeah. question about a yeah. year ago and it took me a day or two to go back and look at the records, but personally where I'm the coach for the person, uh it's about 7,000. 7,000. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm 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 sure you've learned a lot <laughs> in coaching those 7,000. I hope they've learned yeah. as much as I have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, really fascinating, Dan. And you know, one thing that I thought was really interesting, uh, right, that you talk about a lot, which is thinking about your thinking. Mm -hmm. And when I was new to coach, I didn't really exactly you know, know what that really meant, where you were kind of headed with that. And it's fascinating because nowadays I actually have people come up and compliment me about the way I think. They mm -hmm. say, wow, I like the way you think, Dan, Dave. So tell us a little bit about what that really means to you, thinking about your thinking. Yeah, well, uh, there's different kinds of thinking that people do. And thinking about their thinking is the least that they do. Okay, and so I'll just talk about it. There's people who think about things, you know, and if you're in a conversation with them, they're talking about their things, their home, their cars, their cottage, you know, and, uh, you know, the technology that they're working with. And their life is mainly a, a world of things. Okay, and uh, then there's people who primarily they think about people. And that's, that's why I think social media has been such a, uh, you know, a huge phenomenon was that, you know, they're interacting from the time they get up in the morning till the time and, you know, bringing each other up to date. But it's all about people. They're talking about people. And, uh, you know, and the first two levels mix, they're talking about people and their things. And yeah, and, and then there's a third level, which is thinking about thoughts and pretty well your entire upper echelon of the educational system is uh, people uh, thinking about thoughts, but they're not their thoughts. They're, you know, you'll have a, you'll have a professor at Harvard who's, um, you know, is an expert in President Lincoln, and he examines uh, President Lincoln, Lincoln's writings, his speeches, you know, and his thoughts. But they're not, they're not thinking about their thinking. They're thinking about someone else's thoughts and. Uh, and everything else. And I would say those first three levels really are 99% of people's lives. And thinking about thinking is on another level. And I think that entrepreneurs are better uh, at this to start with and not know that they're really good at this. And they can't quite explain why from a very early age. I mean, when, when did you have your, uh, Dave, when did you have your first inklings that you probably weren't going to be a good employee. <laughs> Probably in school, back to grade school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was think very that, disobedient. <laughs> yeah. And I, I find the, the entrepreneurial road, um, which is a fork, and they take one fork in the road. 90, 95% of the population takes one road where they know they want to get a good job and they want to, you know, they may be in the course of a lifetime have five or six different jobs, but they're always an employee. And the entrepreneur right from the beginning says, there's no way that I'm going to take orders from someone else, you know, and starting with parents and teachers. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, where, where in Connecticut, where in Connecticut did you grow up? So I grew up, um, sadly, people know the town, uh, Newtown, uh, Connecticut, 
because they, you know, they had that shooting there oh, in yeah. school, which was really tragic. But, um, you know, I grew up in a middle class family. Yeah. And, you know, to your point, I mean, it's just it's so interesting, right, because I followed that, you know, recipe of success like so many of us do, which is go to school, get good grades. Life is just going to work out. Don't go and to then, jail. Don't go to jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you, and you'll be fine. Right. And yeah. And I did the ROTC program in the Marine Corps, and I know you served in the Army as well, Dan. And, um, you know, it was a complete, uh, you know, bureaucracy. It was a hierarchy. It was just this system that, you know, I really struggled inside of that yeah. system. I liked I liked being mission driven, but I didn't like the system. And then when I got into corporate America, it was completely more of the same, right? Which is this corporate hierarchy and all of these, you know, rules. It just didn't. Well, what was the industry? What was the industry? Um, I was in the tech industry. Oh, yeah. 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 The uh yeah, so there's this, uh, but I um, you know, I've done a lot of anecdotal research on this topic. You know, when did you get the sense that you weren't operating the way the other kids were, you know? And uh it's before 10 years old. I, I would say easily you can see it before 10 years old. The other thing I notice, how old are you now? 54. 54. I would say at 54, you're probably more like you were when you were eight years old than almost all of the people you know who aren't entrepreneurs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah there's something about uh, a childhood playfulness that entrepreneurs hold on to that uh, other people don't, you know, and, uh, you know, just in, in tinkering with things and, uh, you know, doing things that are not ordinary. So anyway, back to your original question, uh, where it started. So we started in workshop form and it's just grown, you know, it's just uh, every year it grows. We've had 35 years. Uh, we've had two years where we just broke even. We've had 33 years where we made a healthy profit and um, profit's good. Absolutely. Um, it's it's one of my favorite things. One of my favorite <laughs> things is making a profit because yeah. it, buy, it buys you time, it buys you resources, it it uh, buys you freedom. Right. It, freedom. And, and, and that's really the key, Dan, because, you know, again, when I went through these years of being in corporate America and being in, you know, in, in institutions and everything, it was all really about like this system, you know, you were stuck in someone else's machine. And it was so refreshing the first time I really heard you to realize that, you know what, it finally dawned on me that I'm playing on someone else's chessboard. Mm -hmm. And I need to be on my own chessboard. That's right. right. Making my own moves and get out of the gap and get yeah. into the game. Yeah. 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 I, th I think the, um, um, yeah, it's uh, some, I, I, I mean, you just made reference. They said, if you were playing chess, what, what would you rather be? Would you rather be the white piece or the black piece? And he says, well, I don't want to be either of the pieces. I want to be the board. <laughs> and I, I think that's what entrepreneurs, it's a great, uh, it's a, it's a great thing. I want to be the chess board and, yeah. uh, and, uh, yeah, and I want to make the rules. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So and, that you're winning more than yeah, enough. So that, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, we had, um, it was interesting. Uh, we just had our annual summit with our mastermind group and we talk a lot about, uh, creating holistic wealth in your life, right. And mm -hmm. looking at all the different elements, including, you know, health and mindset and all these different things. And we did this uh, really cool exercise. We did a wealth visioning mind mapping. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so fascinating to see what unanimously showed up for everyone, which you know the answer to, which was at the center of this. It wasn't about how many zeros are in your bank account or how big your portfolio is. It was all about freedom. Yeah. So t tell us about you know your your concepts around freedom. Yeah, well, there's two types of freedom, and uh, one of them is freedom from. Okay, so I'll take you back to Connecticut uh, and the school, and you know your experience in the Marine Corps, your experience in uh, you know in corporate life. One thing that drives you to be an entrepreneur is that you want freedom from what you don't like about something in your past. Okay, 
you know, and uh, and I would say that the vast majority of entrepreneurs uh, that I have met, their entire life is still governed by freedom from. They're still, they're very successful. You're 54. They're very successful. And uh, they have achieved things that they couldn't have imagined 20, 25 years ago. And, uh, but they're still trying to get away from something, okay? And what I say is because you're not really thinking about what you really want, okay? Freedom, uh, when you get freedom too, so I, I'm totally in freedom too, you know, there's something I'm getting to, and I've got an update on that, and I've just been talking about it for the last couple of weeks, so we can reveal it on this show. And I was saying to... Um, a group, and I haven't draw a picture. I'm I'm kind of gifted visually, uh, you know. I, I was a born artist, and in the ad agency, I, I did a lot of, you know, layouts mm -hmm. and things like that. So I'm 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 very good at that. So I just had them take a sheet of paper and turn it sideways, a blank sheet of paper, and in the lower left hand corner, I had them draw a little circle and put the word here there here next to the little circle and then go to the upper right hand and there's a big circle and put there and then draw a straight line uh, from the little circle to the big circle with an arrowhead that touches the uh, the big circle and I said now above the line write the word striving and uh, they write the word striving and I said this is a picture of your life you're here and you're trying to get to there and I said how many of you I've just drawn a portrait of your life here, there, always striving. And I said, now, uh, you've been at, you, you were this way at 10 years old, uh, you're that way at 54. And I said, now, over the last uh, 40, 44 years for you, Dave, uh, and under the line, you have striving on the line, then underneath the line, in bigger letters, write the word habit. You have a habit of being here and striving to get to there. Mm -hmm. That's the strongest habit in your life. There are no other habits in your life that's as strong as this habit. So when do you think you'll get to there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your I habit never... is not getting to there. Your habit is really... striving to get to there. <laughs> it's and... a nice way to put it, habit, Dan, because I might call it an addiction. <laughs> Which is why I like to work with Joe a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just got off Adderall. I've been on Adderall for years, and uh, but it was uh, interfering with my sleep patterns. And uh, so I did a, a sleep program. It was Zoom. Great doctor, Dr. Michael Bruce from, uh, he lives in California, but he's very famous. He's sleep doctor to the stars, uh, sort of. And um, he's, he said, you know, uh, this chemical that you're taking to get yourself up and get yourself focused uh, destroys your sleep patterns. So you don't have to be rested. You just take an Adderall and you're, you're okay. And then at night you're taking a sedative to go to sleep. So you don't, you don't have to be sleepy to go to sleep. You know, I mean, you don't have to be tired to go to sleep. And you don't have to be rested to get up and do a full day's work because chemically. But he said, if you would get off the Adderall and then we'll get you off the sedative, you know, it'll be a bit of cold turkey for a little, you know, for a week or two. But all of a sudden you'll notice that your natural sleep pattern will kick in. And it made sense to me what he said. It made sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, the next day I went off Adderall and... That was eight months ago, and I've had one Adderall, one tablet uh, in the last eight months. And all of a sudden, uh, I just kicked in, you know. And uh, so <laughs> he said, he was amazed at how quickly I went off of it. And he said to me, he said, you know, I don't think you were addicted to Adderall. I think Adderall was addicted to you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. and, <laughs> and he said... Was there sort of screaming and shouting on Adderall's part when you, because it thought it had a lifetime deal and yeah, it, you didn't. Yeah. So you have to often wonder whether the the substance, whatever it is, is um, you're addicted to it or it's addicted to the you because you're you're a neat per, you're a lifetime 
you're a lifetime mm. train ride, you know, <laughs> you, you go. <laughs> but the thing that I did, and uh, maybe it made it easier, 10 years ago, I'll be 80 in May. So 10 years ago, I went up to that I came up with this diagram about 20 years ago, but I never showed it to anybody. And I said, I'm declaring myself there. And now I'm just going to expand there to include more people. I'm going to expand there to include more freedom, but I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm not trying to mm. get. So uh, it's interesting. And the last 10 years have been by far the most uh, creative and productive of my, as a matter of fact, we have a thinking tool, and I'll bring thinking tools because I want to go back to your question, uh, thinking about your thinking. Hmm. In Coach, we have 240 of them that have been created, and they're ways of thinking about different entrepreneurial situations. But if you think through the tools that you've mastered in the program, Dave, what you'll realize is they're all questions. They're all questions. And uh, so I just have a tool. It's called Your Best Decade Ever. And I take people back 10 years. Uh, first of all, I have them show all the decades of their life graphically. The big arrow, which they break into little arrows, you know, 10 years old, 20 years old, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so you're in your sixth decade right now at 54. And But if you just go back to 44, have you created and produced more in the last 10 years than you did before the last 10 years. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I did, I've done this with about 300, 400 entrepreneurs. And to a person, they say, I've achieved more in the last 10 years than I did. You know, if, if you're 54, you've achieved more since 44 than you did before 44. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then I ask them the question, well, when in the future would you want that not to be true? that the decade that you're in right now, you're not creating more and producing more than you did up until that point. Like, I, I've achieved more since 70 than I did before 70. And when I get to 90, I will have achieved more uh, since 80 than I did than, than I did. And that's how you expand there. What if everything you thought you knew about investing was wrong? Would you like to create a wealth strategy like the top 1% have? and get exclusive access to top private equity deals that provide downside protection, tax efficiency, predictable cash flow, and have a lucrative upside? Discover how with the Pantheon Advantage and join our investor club today at pantheoninvest.com. Yeah, that that's just such an abundant way to live, Dan. And, um, you know, it, it ties into your concept of living to 156. And maybe, you know, you can unpack that next for the listeners, because, you know, I think what it does is it's really just changing this paradigm that we all live in, the societal norm that, you know, at age 65, you know, we're going to go retire Go you to know, the departure uh, again. Start making your way to the departure <laughs> lounge. <laughs> it, it, exactly. Yeah. And uh, and you've you know you've completely changed that. So so talk to us well, about well, that. Well, uh, I did it for my. I mean, all the tools. I do it for myself. You know, I mm -hmm. I, I mean uh, uh, I mean I I'm now taught to you know what I do is I I never um, I never start creating a tool for the purpose of uh, selling it to the entrepreneurs in the uh, in the program i do it because i'm dealing with something and i need a new way to think about it okay and uh so you know i'm i <laughs> i experiment on myself and uh but since by being an entrepreneur i'm defined as weird anyway <laughs> My my might as well go the whole way. Yeah, you might yeah. as well go the whole way. I mean, if you're going to be weird, don't don't yeah. do it. Don't do it in half measures. <laughs> do you think, Dan, that there's some parallel in your journey to Maslow's hierarchy and say moving closer towards self actualization? Yeah, except I I think uh, self actualization is a is a very manipulative. I never. I, I go along with survival, safety, belonging, achievement, you know, the first four levels. Yeah. But when you get to self-actualization, uh, that means that there's a completion at some point. 
you're actualizing who you really are as if that already exists. You're not filling up, uh, you know, you're filling up like uh, space, you know, I'm 95% self-actualized and then, but what happens when you get to 100% actualized, you know? And yeah. I think it's a bit of a gap term too. I find it very, yeah. he, he created that for corporations. He didn't create it for entrepreneurs. Yeah, uh, He lived in the 1940s, Abraham Maslow. And uh, so I, I've changed it to self-transformation that wherever you are, you can transform it into something better. Hmm. And I think my best decade ever uh, tool actually does that. Yeah, yeah, I'm achieving an enormous amount up to 80. 70 to 80 was great. But when I'm at 90, I will have created and achieved way, way more than I did in the first 80 years. So, and I can't see the point in the future where I would want to stop doing that. Yeah, it's just such an abundant way of thinking, Dan. I mean, how are you able to really develop that mindset to get there, right? Because, you know, 98% of the folks out there, frankly, aren't aren't thinking that way, right? Yeah. Well, it's the thinking about your thinking, you know, how do you really want to have it? You know, I mean, um, do you want to start declining physically? Do you want to start uh, declining mentally when you're in your, like you're right at the point after 50, usually people decline. You know, mm -hmm. people are probably at their tops at 50. And then by the time they're 60, uh, they've lost energy, they've lost muscle, uh, they've lost brain power, uh, they've lost ambition. And I said, well, do, do you want it that way? <laughs> and they said well you know uh, i said no no you're picking up on what other people want <laughs> you know it's not what yeah. you want <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 so tell tell us unpack this what you know 156 like how did you how did you actually yeah. come up with that number what does that mean to you that's a weird thought that's weird <laughs> it's a weird <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird thought it's weird now i was watching a documentary uh it was on uh it was 1987, and it was a documentary that they were doing on people who had been born in 1900. Uh, so they were 87 years old, and they had the aspiration to live to the end of the century. They they wanted to live a complete calendar century, you know. I think, and I was really intrigued with it. And then they went into all the things. You know, a lot of stuff has happened during the 20th century: the wars, you know, the depressions. Uh, you know, and all all the different things that have happened. And I said, boy, that would be really neat to live a complete century, a calendar century. And I said, uh, but I'm shortchanged because I was born in 1944. And I said, you know, I, I can only live 56 years during this century. And I uh, so I've had the thought, well, why don't you take the 56 and then do the calendar century from 2000 to 2100? You know, it was a whimsical thought. And and then about a week after I had the thought, I had another thought. I wonder if every time I think of my lifetime, I just use the number 156. Because the way I was thinking right then, you know, family history and that, it was, you know, high 80s, early 90s, grandparents, parents. And I said, you know, uh, I think... Um, I want to see if I can make this a normal thought. And it took me about three years. And, you know, the moment I think of my lifetime today, it's 156. I'll be 80 in May, so I'm just a little bit past halfway. And my my brain's worked out the complete logic to that. Yeah, you got a ton of time ahead of you, you know. So I, Babs and I were married uh, at that time. We got married in 86. And uh, so three years in, I said, I've got a thought. I'm just going to explain the thought to you. And I said, I, I have this thing about living to 156. And she thought about it for about 20 seconds. And she said, well, then I'm going to live to 149. Because she's seven years younger. Uh -huh. And it was just okay. like that. And I yeah. said, whoa, whoa. I mean, she didn't question it. She didn't, she didn't bring up any objections mm -hmm. or anything. She said, well, I'll live to 149. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's... You know, that's been, uh, you know, it's been 35 years, 30, you know, whatever it is. Uh, that was 90, so it's 24, so it's 34 years ago. And um, and then I, the, the program had started, and I was creating thinking tools. So I uh, 
you remember the diagram that because it's the first hour of strategic coach um that you know this is when you're born this is the age when you think you'll die you know and, and we don't even say think we say at what age will you die and let's say somebody puts down 85 and I say, well, let's talk about 84. How do you want to be physically at 84? How do you want to be mentally? How do you want to be financially? How do you want the quality of your relationships, uh, your assessment of the life you've lived up until now? And everybody answers exactly the same way. You know, great, great, great physical shape, lots of energy. You know, got all my marbles, um, you know, financially, you know, no problems, you know, Total, totally taken care of, lots of friends, very supportive friends, and uh, think I'm, you know, really happy with the life I've lived. It's the same. It's the same. Everybody answers the same way. So I said, okay, so you say you're going to die at 85, but you just described how you are at 84. What do you think the chances are being the way you are at 84, you'd die at 85? And I said, well, I wouldn't. So how much longer? And they said, 20 years, 25 years. And I said, well, which? They said 25 years. And I always do it with one person, and then everybody else, mm -hmm. you know, creates the yeah. the same form. And then I shake his hand. I said, You've been with us an hour, and I just bought you 25 years. And <laughs> how about and, that for ROI? And, huh? <laughs> how about How's that for that? ROI, I mean, right? <laughs> where, <laughs> you can where, go home now. <laughs> Your work is done. <laughs> yeah, where where else can you get something like this? You know, right. <laughs> Instant uh, return. But the you did it, Dave. What was it like when you did the exercise? So yeah, it was fascinating, and I, I have to tell you the trajectory on this one is you know I I did the same thing, and I've I've got some genetics uh, issues uh, in my family, so I was thinking you know maybe about eighty nine uh, is what I might make it to, and then I ended up adding I, I added some years on, and I got to the number of one sixteen. And some people have actually called me out because in my last book, uh, I put 116 as my number. And since then, I've actually, I boosted the number. So I'm now up to 146 mm -hmm. because I think that my mindset has actually expanded. And then the things, I mean, I've already done, uh, I'm actually five weeks uh, from doing stem cell injections in my knees. And I know you and I would talk about this a bunch, but um I, I mean, what a game changer, the stem cells and the technology and things that are available. Uh, but the biggest thing, Dan, like, I, you know, I'd have to, you know, encourage people out there to think about that's been massive is like, again, whatever the number actually comes up to be, it's really expanded my present moment. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's not so much what the future looks like; it's what you, the freedom you feel in the present that makes the difference. Exactly. You know, and exactly. I, I, I'm sitting here, you know, and uh, you know, most people at uh, 79, almost 80, aren't buying green ba bananas because they don't know whether they'll die before they get ripe. You know, then <laughs> uh, you know they're making yeah. no new plans, they're establishing no new projects, they're establishing no new relationships just because they've got this thought in their mind. But you moved from 89 to 116, so that's, uh, you know, 146 now. So you've added 57 years. And I would say if uh, it goes on, because that's 93 that I created that tool, and uh, it, 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 uh, people went wild with it. People, uh, you know, they, they just, oh, my God, this changes my thinking about everything. And I said, yeah, I think... We have a number. My my theory is that everybody's got that number, whether they've written it down on a sheet of paper or not. But there's this kind of, you know, it's actuarial tables, it's family history, right. it's uh, relationships that you know, and everything like that. But that's not your thinking. That's you're taking the information from outside. And I said, well, if you could, and the medical means were available, the scientific technological means were available, that you could live to the age that you wanted to, what would be the age, you know? And people say, well, you know, uh, I don't know if uh, I can do, the, do that. And but I said, yeah, but right away you're, you know, you're saying, well, how will this look to other people? Who cares what it looks like to other people? You know, who cares what other people think about it? You know, uh, what do you think about it, you know? And, that, and then they crack through and they say, well, I'd have to change how I'm living right now here. 
how, how I'm eating, you know, how I'm exercising, who I'm hanging, hanging out with. Because if you, if you're 54 and all the people you're hanging out, I think they're going to be dead, you know, before they're 80, they're already dying. So you're hanging yeah. out with a, yeah. a bunch of people who are on a downward slope. Well, you can't be on an upward slope if you're hanging out with people yeah. who are on a do downward slope, you yeah. know. So it, it brings up, it, it, once you ask a question like that, that's a big question, because that's your whole life, and you change what you think your whole life is, everything in your life changes. Yeah, absolutely. And this ties to a concept that we talk about a lot, Dan, which is really, you are your greatest asset. So anytime you can invest in yourself, whether it's, you know, through your health, your mindset, um, you know, coaching, uh, your relationships, your environment, you know, all of these things. And I love, uh, you know, Joe Polish's metaphor of thinking like you're a million dollar racehorse, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to take care, good care of it, right? And all these kind of things. So, you know, wh what do you think about that is, you know, investing in yourself as an asset? Well, uh well you either do or you don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah true yeah, yeah you know I, there is a difference between investments and costs you know yes it, yeah. that was going to be my next question right yeah. how you it, yeah. It, yeah. it's well, an investor it, expense yeah, so. yeah i mean uh yeah i mean the thought occurred to me this was um you know maybe a half a year and it, it's i think there's um there's a thinking tool in this one. That's where how they show up. They they bother me for about three months, and then I create a tool. But the um, I suddenly realized that I'm the only human being during my entire life that I have direct access to. I don't have I don't have direct access to you. I don't have direct access to Babs. You know, I, I don't. I mean, they, there's a universe that Babs lives in that I know a little about. You know. But this one, I, I know a lot about the universe that Dan Sullivan lives in. And so I said, so uh, I'm all I've got to work with. Okay. And and, uh, and I think it comes down to habits. You know, you are tomorrow what your habits are today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you don't change your habits today, nothing's uh, different tomorrow. And that you can project as far as into the future as you want. If you're not changing your habits today, you're not, there's no change in the future. So I put a lot of emphasis on habits, and these are my investment. And uh, I'm on a really neat roll right now because about three months ago, four months ago, it was, and I'll I'll talk uh, talk about this afterwards because it has to do with stem cells. Uh, but um, I said. Um, I'm going to create a scorecard and the scorecard will list habits that are really good for me. Okay. And, uh, but these are changes I'm going to make. Okay. And the first change was I realized as it relates to my health and as, as it relates to nutrition, I never get in trouble with what I eat at meals. I only get into trouble what I eat between meals. <laughs> 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 meals, I'm pretty good. Usually, I've got witnesses <laughs> Be <Yeah>. between <laughs> between meals between meals I don't have any witnesses and um and so I just said I'm not having any snacks nothing snacks so I get to eat three times uh, three times a day it's a meal it's a sit down meal and everything and in the first 5 or 6 weeks I established that as a habit and I've been on it now for about 4 months and it's easy you know, and then I, 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 but I created a little scorecard for me, uh, and I gave it uh, every time I go uh, between meals where I don't have a snack, I get one point. So you get uh, you get four, um, you actually get four points because it's um, you get overnight too. Over <laughs> overnight's the easy one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then I said, well, what other habit? And I've added a whole bunch of habits. So the first. Um, the first week I got a score of about, uh, you know, 21. And now the score I'm getting in a week is about 250. Okay. Wow. 250. And I've just added other habits. And so I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. And all I'm doing is you just focus on one habit at a time and put it in place. And I don't need six weeks, five or six weeks to do it. If I, if I go for 10 days and 
looks like it's getting footing. I just add another habit, you know. And one thing that relates to another tool in Strategic Coach, Dave, and that's the gap. You will never go in the gap if you know you can correct your future. Mm. Look, like the gap is you say, oh, I should have done this, but I didn't do that. I didn't do it. So I feel badly about myself. I said, well, I didn't do it today, but in the future, it's going to be a habit. So I'll just postpone the correction into the future. Which real, which is really easy if you've given yourself a lot of future. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> huh. Yeah, no, that's uh, super interesting. I can see why that's in the weekly planner to have those, oh, yes. you know, all of those habits, right? That you're constantly thinking about it, and it's just such a a dynamic process, right? Uh, as you say, you're you're on this journey that really has no end. And it's all about just creating those habits and how you live your life today very intentionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the big thing for you going uh, forward now? I mean, uh, expanding your there. <laughs> how, how are you expanding your there? Well, it, I mean, it is fascinating. You know, I think about this all the time and it's really in, you know, all different dimensions of my life, you know, from a health. I mean, I'm definitely healthier. I mean, I've always been, I've done Ironman and marathons, but I feel healthier than I ever have in my life, right? Because I'm much more uh, well-rounded, you know, now. So, uh, so always, you know, investing in my health, um, investing in my relationships and, you know, trying to expand the four freedoms, those. The four freedoms. Exactly. The four freedoms, right? Mm -hmm. And, and thinking about those and really trying to serve other people, right? Um, you know, how can we create an, a bigger impact for others, right? To get these types of insights, you know, so that they can be inspired, other people can learn and really kind of go next level because then the impact becomes exponential. They start teaching that to their families, their peers, and their colleagues, um, you know, and we can make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. at, least so our Dan, part of, at least our part of the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So Dan, what's your, uh, what's your reveal? You mentioned you mentioned you have something coming up. You've been uh, talking about for yeah, a few weeks yeah. now. Uh, well, you've been doing the triple play, right? Yes. Yeah. And the triple play is next to the strategy circle is probably the greatest tool I've created. Uh, I created the strategy circle in 82. And, you know, just for our listeners or watchers, um, uh, it's a it's got a code. It's V-O-T-A, Vision, op, Obstacles, uh, Transformation and Action. So there's a question that triggers this. We call it the R factor question. And um, you just say to someone, you know, if we were having this discussion and it was three years in the future, so today's the 12th, is today the 12th or 11th, 12th, uh, 12th, 12th of March, and it's 2027, and we're having a discussion, and you're looking back over the three years back to today, what has to happen in your life during those three years uh, before you... Uh, for you to feel happy with your progress, okay? And it's an interesting question because if they accept the question and they answer, it means they've accepted the relationship. That's why we call it the R factor question, okay? And then they, you ask them more questions and they say, you know, so the, what are five goals you have to have? And it's this, 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 and this, you know, and they have dangers they want eliminated. They have opportunities they want to capture. They have strengths they want to... Uh, maximize. And then you say, okay, so what are the obstacles now? Right now, today, what are the obstacles that prevent you from getting to those? And they lay them out. And then you say, so is it a decision you have to make to get past the obstacles? Is there something you have to communicate? Is there something you have to create? Is there something you have to, there's some action you have to take, you know? So it's uh, vision, uh, obstacle, transformation, action. And that's a great tool. And I would say that virtually every other tool is a uh, is a descendant of that original tool. And then I uh, I have this triple play. And what I've discovered is because we have the free zone, we have three levels of the program. We have signature. We have ten times. 
and we have free zone and free zone is a totally different realm and that's where you as a entrepreneurial company are collaborating with another entrepreneurial company but no money is exchanged and no shares are exchanged you put your two capabilities together to create a third thing that nobody in your industry, your industry, their industry, uh, could have ever created. It's a brand new free zone value creation. And you don't have any competition. So the whole thing is to get uh, collaborations where you're eliminating competition. So anyway, and it's good. But what we've discovered, the best collaborations are actually three people. Okay, and they have three different capabilities and you put the three capabilities together and all of a sudden it just goes really, really crazy. So that's I'm introducing that on Thursday. I have had the triple play for a couple of years, but now I'm using the triple play to create collaborations. Okay, I love that. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You'll get it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> All you have to do uh, is write another check. <laughs> yeah. Dan, if you could give just one piece of advice to the audience about how they could really accelerate their own journeys, what do you think that would be? Journal. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I turned my life around. I, I mentioned my divorce and bankruptcy. That was 1978. And it happened on the same, one, one, one of the bankruptcies happened on the same day when I was divorced. And I had about three or four months to think about it. And I said, you know, the reason why I'm in so much trouble, first of all, it's self-inflicted uh, and uh, nobody else is to blame for this is that I'm not really telling myself what I want, okay? And so I said, so I'm just going to set a goal. For the next 25 years, every day I'm going to write in a journal what I want. And that was at the end of 78, and at the end of 2003, I completed the project. It's 9,131 days, and I, except for 12 days, I did it every day. And all my life, I've created my Merit, my partnership and marriage with Babs, uh, strategic coach, all came because I just did that one thing. And But here's the thing. When you say what you want, don't say because. Because because you're just trying to tell a story to the world, just say, I want this. No explanation. I want this. You know, over you know, almost 10,000 days, I and you can, the only requirement is you have to write one sentence per day. If you want to write a whole page, go right ahead, but you have to do at least one sentence. And I think that will instantaneously change um, people's thinking. Because yeah, most of us live yeah. our life out of what we need. Yeah. And you have to justify that. But wanting, wanting is just a realm. Wanting is a free zone. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've worked uh, extensively on my 100 be, do, have uh, list. And I also learned a little nugget from you a couple of years back on on a little podcast. I think you were talking to Joe. And, uh, you know, I always journal every day as well after I meditate and, you know, have the most clarity of my thoughts and everything. But I really started to expand that into all of these thinking exercises and, you know, started, you know, drawing pictures and all kinds of things. Um, and it really kind of leveled up. Well, my you're, journaling, thinking about right? your th you're thinking about your yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're thinking. Yeah. yeah. It's a separate realm. Uh, very few people, the, the, most people never do any thinking about their thinking unless they have a crisis in their life. Yeah. You know, yeah. all of a sudden they say, gee, why did that happen? Well, uh, the, the answer to that question, you're in the realm of thinking about your thinking. But most people don't like crisis situations, so they associate that type of thinking with crises. And they say, well, I don't. You know, have you ever been there where you're talking about something like we talk about normally in Strategic Coach, and the people around you who are not used to this say, well, this is going really deep. Oh, boy, this, you're kind of going deep here, aren't you? I said, deep, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> We're I mean, just getting warmed up. <laughs> I, I prefer deep to shallow. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, yeah. um, this has been such a pleasure, uh, so insightful as always, and uh, again, really can't thank you enough for you know sharing your wisdom uh, with so many others uh, out there, and 
actually being being a hero to me and so many other mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and others out there. Um, if people would love to, I learn like being more, a hero <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Aspire to be a hero. It's uh, it's a good. Hero. It's good yeah. for you. <laughs> If people yeah. would like to learn more about uh, Strategic Coach or, or or you, what is the uh, best place? Yeah, just our, we have a great website, uh, and, you know, just strategiccoach.com. And, you know, you go there and uh, uh, we have lots of resources there. We have books, we have, uh, uh, you know, our podcasts are there. I have lots of, you know, lots of uh, uh, interviews and, uh, you know, we have stories of what entrepreneurs are doing with you know, strategic coach tools and how the different kind of lives are leading. Now we, you know, we tell you about the program and how to get, uh, uh, how to get um, uh, hooked up with it. But I'd say if you want to go a little bit deeper, you know, from, uh, I, I think I would just do the journaling period, just get, a, just get a journal book and, you know, and, I, and um, you know, uh, just start saying what you want, but no, because don't, don't say, I want this because, because you're you're inventing a fictional story. Just mm -hmm. the truth is you want it, okay? And that's you want it because you want it. And and the more that's a muscle, and the more you do that. But the other thing, I I would start off with our book, Who Not How, and I think Who Not How really is a great first primer for people to understand how coach works. That's uh, Dan Sullivan and Dr. Ben Hardy. Yes, yeah. uh, fa fantastic book. Another one I find uh, so good that doesn't really get, you know, people don't talk about as much, but it's the Lifetime uh, Laws of Growth. Oh, that's uh, a law. That's an old book. Yeah. The, I, I, but it's it's just the laws, so good. The laws of yeah. lifetime growth. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe you need to rewrite that one with Ben. And yeah. Put I think. It out no, there. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to upgrade it. The laws of ten times growth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Dan, really appreciate it again. Thanks again so much um, and look forward to uh, connecting again soon. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for listening to this episode of Wealth Strategy Secrets. If you'd like to get a free copy of the book, go to holisticwealthstrategy.com. That's holisticwealthstrategy.com. If you'd like to learn more about upcoming opportunities at Pantheon, please visit pantheoninvest.com. That's pantheoninvest.com.